we always say he was a genius groomer. You know, pedophiles know what they're doing. We believe now that we know everything that we know that he he selected our family. He knew he would have access, easily a- easy access, easier access because we did come from a big family. And big families, you know, it's hard to concentrate. You, you have a mother raising nine children. And he capitalized on that. He knew, you know, that I was the oldest and I would take everyone to church. I was the oldest in our group. Uh, the older sisters were, you know, their group and then the younger sisters. And I would take everyone to church. He would do things um, to me like say, I know you're only 13 and you want to be able to, you know, talk on the phone a lot. So you can talk on the phone while I take care of your little sisters. Um, Just using things like that. Uh, Using the fact that he was from New York and New Jersey. um, He would say things like, well, this is how a New Jersey priest talks. This is how a New York priest talks. And so when he would talk about sex or talk about things that were inappropriate that, that a priest would talk about, we would think, oh, it's because he was from New Jersey. He would, those are the type of things that he did. He would use National Geographic to start uh, showing you pornography and then work into other things, use Roman statues. Um, he was very, very good at winning over our parents. So that we knew that because he was a priest and we were taught that a priest is the mediator between God and man and we are supposed to revere him, he has that much power that um, he couldn't do anything wrong. And especially if mom and dad are okay with him. You know, I remember specifically one time him telling my parents at the table that he would administer last rites at accident scenes and different things and then he went into another story and talked about how a priest is called to different a a vast array of things and one of them was even one time he had a young girl that was in fourth grade who had started menstruating and and a nun wasn't around and he had to help her and I remember as a 13 year old thinking wow he's talking to my mom and dad about menstruation so when he's talking to me about it and wanting to see my whatever and check me and make sure I'm okay that was okay then like I remember connecting that dot those dots those are the type of grooming things that if you tell people about that stuff today they're like oh my gosh but back then we were it was a different world too you know it just was so those are just some examples Mm -hmm. Teresa I'm sure you have some yeah if Teresa go ahead Teresa if you have something to add. I- um, uh, personally, for me, it was, you know, I got to drive his car at eight years old. <laughs> you know, if if I went through the whole menstruation teaching with him, I got my period when I was eight years old. Laura was there. She w- Her and her friend were, you know, making fun of me and everything. And he consoled me and and took me upstairs and you know told me all about the birds and the bees and what I needed to do and how I needed to use the products and things like that and 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 then after that it was do things for me and you can drive my car so I mean what eight nine year old girl doesn't want to drive a car you know so yeah, those, that's personally, those were kind of my, and candy, of course, and all of the shows that he would, you know, he would get us HBO, you know, he would pay extra to get HBO so we could watch Fraggle Rock and, and, you know, all the different channels on TV and because we didn't have that stuff, you know, we mm-hmm. had four channels. <laughs> so we had all of, all the bells and whistles. Uh, there was no no Mm -hmm. to us so and i think it's it's important to know that um you know we're just we're sharing in the heart of of what he did but it's important to know because we have all the time where we'll have people say oh but you know so and so is so nice he would never do that and so it didn't start off that way it started off where he was 
so friendly and nice. He really spent a lot of time. I mean, this was over the course of 10 years that, you know, we knew him. I met him at 10 and then 20 is when my youngest sister um, came out, Carolyn. And so um, he was nice um, and all those things. So grooming, you don't even know it's happening. Um, and right. then all of a sudden, like Patty said, these things that, that you heard. And then like Teresa said, the, the special exceptions that he gives you um and you know it started off simply with he would come down to the playground you know where we were all playing like all you know the school and the the rectory was next door and he'd always go in the playground and he'd have his his um pockets full of tootsie rolls and he'd give all the kids tootsie rolls so it's hard to eat a tootsie roll to today <laughs> yeah. And I, I just, uh, one huge layer that a lot of, um, we've met a lot of sexual abuse, child sexual abuse victims, and among clergy victims, we have, an, an, it, it's just a whole different layer when you have been abused by someone that is supposed to represent who God is. And so it's, you'll, you'll see in sexual assault victims from clergy or other, um, you know, religions, that most people either go one way or the other. They run from God or to him. It, it's just crazy how, you know, that is used in the grooming process too. Uh, he used a lot of the things within the church um, to groom us. You know, we got chosen for special things to be able to lay the baby Jesus in the, in the manger at Christmas or, you know, we were chosen uh, for different things in the church um, in school uh, and just the things he would say, one time I remember he was showing me pornography and he was uh, showing me it in the context of that this is how the body develops. And he said, now, Patty, if you're having dirty thoughts right now, he said, that's because you have cherished sin in your heart. He said, because the body was created by God, this is beautiful thing. This is not. This is not dirty. And if you're making it dirty, that you have to um, confess that to God because this is beautiful. And so I remember thinking to myself, "Oh my gosh, I'm so dirty because I was having dirty thoughts. I was 13 years old. I mean, I had never seen, you know, a penis or anything. And uh, and so I remember being very confused about that and having a lot of shame, a lot of guilt. Uh, and that's something that, to be quite honest, uh, I'm encountering it still to this day. It's amazing. So it's just, that's just another huge layer I think is important for people to hear. Yes. 